There are bullish divergences to be aware of everywhere. It seems to me like everyone is looking for the bounce to 6,000. However, there is one key critical consideration from a historical perspective that may be telling us that this is not the bounce we are looking for. <laughs> Well, 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 camera number two, welcome back to Crown's Quarantine Cave, where it's business as usual over here, as I am still sitting in front of my computer doing exactly what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now with the added uh, with the added complimentary that there are no shops open around me. So with that said, I'm stocked up on toilet paper, I'm stocked up on fucking red red meat, and ready to do some cryptocurrency analysis right over here. And I want to follow up immediately on the opening statements. But actually, before we get to that, let's let's put the spotlight on the Crown Trading application for a second here. It can be found at app.crowntrading.net. And it is free, so take advantage of it. It's for you. Anyways, um, what we're looking at right here, or sorry, I should, I should probably also mention that all the programs are on sale for 20% off for the end of the week. Anyways, um, uh, check out the videos in the description below that accompany those. Make sure it's a good fit for you. Take advantage of the free, free materials and make sure that you actually have time to take advantage of those if you do invest in them. Okay, that's enough of that. We got some very important stuff to get deep and down and dirty into right now. Okay, so everyone's talking about a bounce right now. Everyone's talking, everyone's seen and correctly seen major bullish divergences on some pretty higher time frames, which certainly does matter. However, there is one big key consideration that that we kind of opened up this whole uh, opening statement with that makes me think that uh, I would actually take the opposite position, at least for now. And of course, when it, whenever it comes to trading ideas and trading plans, it's always a game of statistics, just a game of probabilities. And at the end of the day, we want those probabilities working, out, working for us over time. So it doesn't mean that any one trade is like guaranteed to work out. It's a game, again, it's a long-term game of statistics. But there is one big thing that I'm looking at right here. As Bitcoin has been rising back up, actually about a thousand bucks from our, uh, our 4,400 low from yesterday to about 5,400 or yeah, about 5,400 just a second ago here we have seen open interest actually come down it came down about 100 million if you if you remember from yesterday we were hanging around uh, hanging around the mid 550 million ish region and now uh, and now well below 500 million right here so that tells me that as price action is going up and open interest is going down and we also see and what we're going to see in the charts in a second here that volume was also going down i am very skeptical that this is like the rally the bounce to be had and i actually would be looking to short this very 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 likely of which I actually do have a position on right now um, however, it's not really what we want to focus on at this exact moment. I want to focus on some goddamn charts. And let's go over here and let's let's first give the due diligence and give credit where credit is due. Does Bitcoin have bullish divergence on timeframes that actually do matter? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have very obvious bullish divergence on the four hour right here. And this is not even the highest time frame that it's present on. It's actually present on, I believe, the 10 hour. Yes, indeed it is. And maybe even the 12 hour. Yes, it is as well. And that's where I believe a lot of these people are getting targets for, you know, 6,000 uh, to 6,100 ish region, which is valid. And typically, I would take that stance alongside with it. But with regards to open interest coming down as this price session is going up, and as you can see, over the whole uh, volume is coming down as well. If you're looking from left to right, then it tells me that we're probably still kind of stuck within the dumps here. No pun intended, but we are likely, you know, light, likely to play out a little more consolidation consolidation in this region. And I really wouldn't look for that next big bounce to happen until Bitcoin puts in maybe a third drive of that divergence on at the very least a four hour total time frame. But Bitcoin is also postured very, very well to have a very nice bounce if and when we actually do get that. So I do think that we probably will see those levels tested at some point. But I, I'm not necessarily convinced that this is the run right here. Anyways, let's go down to lower term time frames and look at the blue boxes of peace and prosperity, which I think are actually best had by the three hour time frame right now, as uh, the three hour is still technically printing lower highs. Um, uh, however, it's gonna it's gonna actually have a chance to revert that with this current three hour deal right here. But that does close in in the next hour and seven minutes, so we probably won't be able to see that one together. Anyways, um, I will certainly be taking a loss on, the, on this position, especially if uh, especially if we just trade above our current high on this dildo right here at about 5450-ish region. I'll be happy to take a loss and perhaps reposition a little bit later. But as it stands right now, you know, is Bitcoin coming into resistance right here? If you are looking at this as your last little local high, then yes, it is. And typically speaking, when we have our last little local high right on over here, we can compare our side divergences in the context of the trend, which is still a downtrend to be fair, although that could very easily switch around right here. And that's kind of what the crystal, crystal ball, you know, or sorry, that uh, that's a little bit more crystal ball than anything else. But as you can see, we would have technically hit and bearish divergence in play as we are still in the context of a downtrend. And RSI would be making higher highs alongside a potential lower high in price action. But again, this is not not confirmed right now and as it stands bitcoin looks like it actually kind of wants to rally off this region 
so let me just get rid of this because it's not really relevant to what we're talking about right now and i want to talk about the uh the last 24 hours of price action where we left off last so remember yesterday i think bitcoin was trading above a little bit above 5,000, and we said that bitcoin was likely to come down to 4450 ish region 4400 and we did we bounced there and while i did say that it was going to be a low time frame bounce this actually ends uh is 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 now going to potentially turn into a medium time frame bounce so again i want you to divorce my opinion from the technical analysis because my opinion is it's it's irrelevant you should not care about my opinion at all what whatsoever um you shouldn't care about anything that's say at all whatsoever i'm just sharing my opinion for better or worse here and uh and take you know take what's about what uh, whatever you find valuable from it and discard the rest and hopefully leave a mean comment at the same time anyways um, <laughs> anyways at the same time um you know, looking at Bitcoin right here, uh, we did get that move to the downside, of course, and we did get that initial pop back up, of course, as well. We followed up on Twitch stream yesterday, which, by the way, I will be doing another Twitch stream tonight. Um, probably around the same time, maybe a little bit later. We'll see. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but we left off like somewhere right around about 5150-ish region, of which actually did short that bounce again. And we got down to exactly the area that we're looking for. Actually, a little bit uh, a little bit closer to it. Um, I said 4850. We got down to about 48 even. Close enough is close enough. Now, I didn't make any real calls after that. So this price action right here is still kind of you know floating in the way that I look at it and can actually have an implication with the medium term time frames now. So I do believe that we've seen all of the lower term time frames play out. The question is now is is this going to pick on over into the medium term time frames? At which point you actually probably could look for price action back around six thousand dollars. Even though I'm not I'm not positioned for that right now. I'm actually I'm actually short right now and I will be taking a loss on this relatively soon if this if this keeps on uh, if this keeps up essentially. But the key critical component of this that I be looking for is this blue box right here as long as we are below about 55 50 ish region i don't think that that is the most likely thing to happen i think that we are just kind of playing in the short term um ranges right now we can even take off this one right here because it's while while, while it is still relevant it's not what we want to focus on in this exact moment in time um the more the uh, the mo the the most obvious and uh and, and relevant areas is going to be this blue box right here that's the upside one that one i would target a move towards the lower six thousand dollar region if we do actually trade above it or sorry close above it and on at the very least a two hour or four hour dildo and that's going to be again about 55 50 ish region that's going to initiate and really confirm the bullish divergence that we see on the 10 hour and 12 hour of which that's going to that's going to essentially have a target on the 10 hour of about 59 50 ish region and on the 12 hour actually significantly higher than that that, but this should be coming down quite a bit on the next tick um it's probably somewhere right around about 6200 ish region so you know make a nice 200 dollars region between about six you know 59 50 and 61 50 ish region is 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 what i'd imagine um but until we get that in, in, until we get trading above this region and start closing some uh, even some of the lower time frames above this region i do think that it might be a little bit premature to be targeting a nice bounce like that even though again it is 100 relevant 100 correct that a lot of people are calling this bullish divergence here i just am a little bit concerned about the underlying market dynamics that accompany this move as well as just the general sentiments of like everyone like everyone's looking for a fucking bounce from what i've seen um and that's fair enough you know i don't like playing that game where it's like everyone's thinking this so i'm gonna think the opposite because it's like you don't fucking know and you don't i mean crypto twitter while it does represent a good amount of the <laughs> of the sentiments in cryptocurrency land it doesn't represent everyone of course and probably not the people who are moving the markets i'd imagine um anyways Let's go down to the lower term time frame to see if we can come up with any sort of uh, any sort any sort of more obvious things. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be playing the four hour 21 X benchmark average. I don't have an opinion on that. I don't think it's really re I don't think it really matters if we close above or below it here on this next uh, on this next four hour doodle, which actually closes in two minutes and 25 seconds and counting down. So uh, I don't really care too much about that. In fact, to me, the first test of the 21 X benchmark average after kind of being away from it from this last breakout or sorry breakdown from the uh, $7,700 base right in over here is probably well probably going to be a probably you know, probably going to be pushed back. To uh, at least on the lower term time frames to myself of which you know we could could we say that we already got that maybe yes actually maybe yes but i'd still i'd still have a lot of patience within this region i also want to look at um i i, I do want to look at the four hour jewel which actually did print a pretty damn good buy signal so to be fair this is probably the most convincing thing to myself the four hour jewel right here is giving you a uh, about a perfect buy signal right here which was on this low on this spike low to about 48.50 before about a thousand dollar run and then we are lining up for yet again another decent you know de uh, you know what what should be a relatively powerful signal right here um so it's it's a competing narrative but i would be I, I would be hesitant to really look for the full effects of it again until bitcoin really starts to close about this area right here i do have a trend line right around 5800 that is not relevant for anything more than very 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 low time frame uh you know 
ebbs and flows essentially um, other than that this is all that i really care about right now even this guy down around here is not all that relevant it's just a game of blue box to blue box and what we can do early on in this video is we can actually is we can go look at the expected moves chart and see how this kind of lines up with each other so i want to be looking at again 5500 or sorry 5550 to 5600 right here that changes the medium term time frames opens up the next run towards about let's just call it 6000 to 6100 ish region for for ease of uh conversation and then this guy down around here right around about 45 50 ish region if we break that to the downside i would look for a retest of you know of of, of you know of our lows essentially at 42 50 ish region anyways uh let's go over here to our probability chart and whoa jesus christ man uh <laughs> and actually uh we have a few new updates on this which i'm really really excited about Oh, this is great. This is fucking great. Anyways, um, this is a 12 hour right now, which I which I have found a lot of use on. And we you can see that we are testing the tops out of the first deviation right now. So it is a less than 16% chance that we do close this next 12 hour deal above that region. But let's we can actually now narrow down exactly on specific price points to see what their probable what their probability is for that next closure. So we can do this on the 12 hour right here. I need to go up to my probability plane. There it is and we will put in our target price remember what actually changes this one is five 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 zero ish you know we could we could essentially say that um and let's see how is that going to change things right now so current price 54 uh sorry 5380 uh target price hey no you should change the target price god damn it <clears throat> uh let's see maybe hmm. Uh, let's see um we should see a probability above target probability is actually greater than 34 and a half percent or sorry let uh sorry less than 34 and a half percent my bad <laughs> bad slip of the tongue right there very bad slip of the tongue but to close this next 12 hour delta above that specifically with regards to historical volatility percentile uh, charting or uh, sorry make uh making these expected moves it would say a uh, little bit less than 34 and a half percent which is actually which is actually pretty damn high um let's look at for the downside as well remember this area right here is going to be cognizant of the downs uh, of the downside 48 50 ish region imagine that it's going to be significantly lower in fact because it is right around the bottom side of our first innovation so probably 16 and a half percent if i had to guess in fact we could probably just <laughs> could probably already get that i suppose but just for just for math's sake and to show off this indicator because i'm I, I think it's really really cool i think i have to put it in for whatever reason i have to put it in twice and then it and then it populates um it you know it it it, uh, it should show us. Come on, baby, come on, update you fuck. Hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Update. There we go. Uh, less than less than nine percent chance essentially. So is the upside more likely than the downside? Technically yes. Technically yes. But I would I would caution against what I cautioned against um, earlier in this uh, in this uh, video. We can rally up all the way up to 55, 50-ish region, 5600, and still the medium time frames are technically not changed. So I would be, uh, I would be a little bit defensive against a move like that right now. Anyways, let me just make sure that everything's cool over here, and I think your boy is going to be taking a nice little lossy loss relatively soon if this thing keeps on going up a little bit more but uh i will play the position regardless of that fact okay going back into the actual charts right now we did just close the four hour dildo and let's see how that changes around the momentum oscillators right now and we do see that we do see actually this was better shown on a three hour from yesterday we do see that the three hour stoke um trend line actually held things up really really valiantly right around that 44 50 ish marker right here getting that test down to that same trend line that's been holding up our lows ever since the 8th of march actually funnily enough going all the way back and over here getting this low getting this low and getting this low right here so when you find a time frame that works this is this, this is what the this the, uh, this is what technical analysis haters will really hate about this when you find a time frame that works you just fucking stick with it until it stops working <laughs> <laughs> it's just that simple man it's just that fucking simple and right now the three hours working pretty damn well and uh do we have anything new as far as the rsi is saying right now well no because we didn't we didn't close this time frame um but we did close a four hour and an eight hour so let's go check out what these guys are doing right now four hour did regain the 10 simple i do think that we probably retest that 10 simple down around 5200 ish region 5250 on the lower term time frames and then from there if this thing is going to bolt on over to you know 5900 6000 ish region uh that's that if it's going to come from the same move but i you know i'd expect it to happen after that um, but again all going to be mediated by a close above this blue box territory right here that is the that is the one blue box to rule them all right now well not really but just for the upside essentially um so let's talk about the higher term time frames and how that picture could change very very rapidly if we were to actually you know start to regain that region and here's what i'd be looking at right here on the weekly the 200 simple and the 200 exponential average if bitcoin could regain the 200 simple by week's end i do think that bitcoin ultimately will regain or sorry it will at the very least test the lower six thousand dollar region and it and it is going to start to look a lot more like bitcoin's trying to put in a low on this region closing below the 200 simple and the 200 exponential average last week was bad obviously yes but 
it is not a death sense, uh, you know, in the same way that an open and close would be as that's really showing that the Boston algos do want to live below that region. They are actually at, and they've and they've actually switched their their uh, their buy programs to sell programs off that region as well. But for right now, it does look like it's going to give a legitimate test and we're going to get we're and, and, and we're going to get clarity on the market if it actually if we actually do want to live, live below this region. If that were to happen by end of week, meaning that we actually do uh, get our first open and close below a weekly 200 simple and well and 200 X benchmark average for the first time in a while and for the the 200 simple moon average for the first time in the history of Bitcoin, actually, if we actually look at it, you know, long term, you can see that we've never closed below the 200 simple, especially on an open and closing uh, basis. Um, we actually have gotten a few closed below right in over here, but it's a little bit too early to really care that much. Um, but uh, but if that were to happen, then yes, I would look for a move back down below 4,000 into the 3,500-ish region right around here overall. But again, that's that's actually well and far away right now. And we actually would just have to wait simply until the end of the week at uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Or I think it's actually 8 p.m. Eastern time now because uh, USA has changed their clocks forwards. And I don't think we've done it just yet here in, uh, in Finland, unfortunately. So it is a little bit confusing for myself. I want to make sure that I'm actually recording right now i am and my microphone's working so that's good all right get that out of the way early because we're only 60 minutes in so <laughs> don't need to re-record this one fucking great anyways um Anyways, uh, what else do I want to check while we're here? Yeah, so we did close a couple of higher time frames yesterday as well, not just the daily, but also the two day. Uh, the daily is looking is I, I don't really have much to make out of the daily right here. We are going to see momentum also is turn back up, I'd imagine. Um, you know, you know, uh, and, and especially coming out of the uh, the 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 more critical zone to the downside as well. But I'm not really. Uh, this is not really doing too much for me right now. Um, daily RSI. We still don't have any bullish divergence here, and I am very hesitant to call any sort of a long-term bottom on the market until we get daily uh, bullish uh, RSI divergence. I don't think that we've ever seen a major low in Bitcoin being put in without without bullish divergence at the very least on the daily. Uh, for example, you know, and, and I'm not and I'm not speaking just to market cycle lows. I'm even speaking to just like major lows in general so of course every major low is going to be a or sorry every mark cycle low is going to be a major market is going to is going to be a major low but not every major low is going to be a market cycle low. For example, this over here is a major low, but it's obviously not the market cycle low, right? And we do see bullish divergence coming off this region right here. One, two stabs, boom, major move up all the way from about 6,600 to, well, 10 and a half thousand. So pretty nice. Uh, we have another major one right here. One, two, three drives to the downside. Boom, major move up 3,000 bucks and falls right back on its face. But again, you know, major low, not a market cycle low. And same thing for the highs as well, by the way, it's, it, you know, it works both ways. In fact, if you just wanted to trade divergence to get like the long-term macro trends, it, it, wor it, it works, <laughs> it works. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, and of course, uh, back on our actual market, our last market cycle low right here, we did get three drives of bullish divergence as well. And then, of course, on all of the lows in 2018 uh, during this major down, um, we do see that all of these major lows do have bullish divergence on them and did produce, you know, tw uh, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 or sorry, 20 to 50 percent rallies, which is very much tradable, very much, you know, you know, very much identifiable coming back on over here, coming back on over here, over here, over here. You get it. Um, and then we can we can obviously draw this out a little bit further, but I'll just show the last market cycle low back at um at uh, at this area right here and funnily enough this one actually doesn't have uh this one actually well if you if you kind of cheat and go all the way back and over here you could say that it has uh it does it does have uh, bullish evidence but i wouldn't really say that um this this one funnily enough doesn't really have it then again it's like do you, you know do you consider this guy running over here eh, it's a little bit far away do you have to be consistent with that um but for the most part we just don't see that happening. Um, so I am very skeptical to be calling like a major mark cycle low here, but I do think that Bitcoin can rally. And if it does rally, I do think that's, you know, the low 6,000s is, you know, is, is, uh, is a likely target if, if, the medium time frames can regain 55 50 5600 ish region would look good to me um until that happens i would be i i i would be defensive in this market um i do want to check out the 12 hour as well the 12 hour stokes are kind of snaking around right now i'm very curious to see how this next um this next uh what's it called uh 12 hour closes if we close i'd imagine below 5200 we should actually open those back up to the downside however if we close here or higher above 5400 we should open these to the upside and that all and that also would be a damn good indication that we probably do end up taking out that critical 55 50 ish resistance um, on the medium term time frames maybe even on the next 12 hour close if that were to happen that would be the most obvious thing to me um, however we do still have this trend line coming in right uh, right around here coming in from our last few lows 27th of feb then then again on the first of march and then more recently on the 10th and and uh, 12th and 13th essentially and, uh, and and if we were to open up back down which would essentially be considered a rejection of getting out of the bearish control zone which is quite which is quite normal um, then i would be looking for another retest somewhere around this trend line which just so happens to come 
come in right at the edge of the critical zone, which is naturally going to have a little bit of um, a little bit of ebb and flow around that region, regardless of the fact whether you know an asset's like fully bullish or fully bearish. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll be looking at right now. Um, other than that, it does become a little bit more of, I mean, you know, other than that, I don't really have anything that's like too hard hitting about this. Not that that, that, that was even hard hitting at all. Um, realistically, we want to go check out the traditional markets right now, which traditional markets uh, spy closing literally on the lows. This is what makes me think that also we could be looking at just another another sell the bounce area. Spy not, uh, not just close on its lows. It's probably trading. Yeah, it is, uh, it is trading down right now. No. Pre market's trading up a little bit. Sorry, I apologize about that. Uh, yeah, we closed at 239 spot 55. Currently, pre market is trading 243 spot two. So that is, you know, a little bit, we are a little bit further away from the market open, though. I really don't trust pre market data until we get to about like one to two hours before the market open. It's notorious for just faking the, faking the fuck out of people. Um, but what is good is that Australia did close the day up, and I believe Japan as well has closed the day a little bit up. However, it closed a little bit up after. After retesting the lows and this looks like another lower high to me in fact it just looks like a descending triangle being printed on the lows so a lot of people are asking do i think that we can go lower in traditional markets yes i do think so and in fact i do still think that um traditional markets probably do reach towards the 377 exponential moving average down around here which we kind of actually got yesterday to be fair uh we got down to 237 spot 36 and it's officially at like 235 region um also going to be the 942 uh, Fibonacci retracement right here, uh, a lesser known one, but it is essentially in line with our 2018 lows in December right here. You probably remember that one because Bitcoin was actually testing down to 6,000 from its first run to 20,000 at that time. And what do you know? They both come down and make the lows at the exact same fucking time. Or sorry, no, 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 no. This was the one where it broke 6,000 down to 3,000. This one over here was when it broke uh, 20,000 or sorry, broke from 20,000 down to 6,000 right here. Very, very funny that they seem to happen at the same time. Hmm. Correlations, covariances in all these regression analyses. Very, very interesting when talking about a lot of things that are going on, on Twitter right now, which I won't mention because I don't want to I don't want to get involved in that right now. We can we can perhaps destroy that later. But I feel like I've already done my I, I feel like I've already done my piece on um on what I think there. And until we get new information, I don't really have much to add. Um uh, but looking at traditional marks right here as well. Same sort of thing. Um, I don't really want to be calling a bottom until we get like confirmed bullish divergence. Could we be working on bullish divergence here? Yes, absolutely. In fact, we are working on bullish divergence. Um, just needs to confirm a local low, and then we actually will have it in place. And I would look for a pretty phenomenal bounce, uh, maybe even back up all the way to like the 200 simple and 200 exponential average on the weekly. The problem is, is that I do, I, I do actually think that that this is going to bounce pretty damn heftily even if this is still overall bearish and we do head, head lower overall. The reason why I say that is because there is a massive death cross coming along the way. Now, there's a couple of good things about this and a couple of bad things about this. So, well, it depends on your disposition, but just hear me out. So what I'm saying here is that uh, the death cross, the green and the purple, the 55 and the 200 is going to be coming along the way. Uh, you know, unless if this thing opens back up around like fucking 300 bucks, today <laughs> it, you know by the end of the week this will be death crossed officially however the thing is that even the sorry the thing is that um price action is very far away from this proverbial death cross uh, you know we we are using a little bit of crystal ball right now so i do want to be clear with that um but it price action is very far away so typically when you see something like that actually it will mark a local low and you will rally up the question is does that rally turn into another sell the rally and usually where you'll rally up to is one of the lower period moving averages so either the 21 or the 10 simple and in this case the 10 simple is all the way at 280 and the 21 is all the way at 290 so you can see that it probably is likely to bounce pretty damn hard um and it can go a long way but i just want to show that it can go a long way without actually doing anything different from the macro perspective or even the long-term perspective uh keep in mind here that uh, traditional markets uh are essentially under pressure especially Especially as, uh, for, from a long-term perspective, from a long-term perspective, to be very, very clear, um, as long as we're below the last breakout point, which is about 300 bucks, low, low 300s essentially. So it can do a lot of damage to the upside and not really revert all that much. Although I would say a good first step to putting in at the very least, the argument for a good long-term base is if this next weekly could close above the 200 simple and 200 exponential mean average, which are gonna be somewhere around like 260-ish region to 265 region. Um, the problem is, again, that a death cross is coming uh, on the daily and I do put quite a significant amount of weight on that 
and Bitcoin, you know, pretty much already got the same thing. In fact, that's kind of, you know, driving the analysis on Bitcoin as well. We did get the death cross right in over here, but look how far, look, look at how far away price action is. That's not really what you want to be looking for when you see a cross like this. And I do think that we probably at some point, are very, well, at some point, definitely, well, I shouldn't say definitely, but very, very likely we'll be testing the 10 simple at the very least and probably the 21. And at this point, the 10 simple is coming in around 6,300 and, and, and falling extremely rapidly. It fell about 300 bucks, a little bit more than 300 bucks from yesterday to today and 400 bucks uh, the day prior to that. So what does that mean? It means that by tomorrow we will be coming in somewhere right around 6,000 bucks. So if Bitcoin was to have that rally to the upside, I do think a nice short-term top for that. Again, if we do break 5550 uh, to the upside of 5600, if you wanna make it a little bit more easy, um, I would be looking for a move essentially to the 10 simple, which is gonna be probably around like 6,000 or 6,100-ish region, um, would be a nice target in my opinion. Anyways, um, um, um. So what else do I want to get? I feel, I feel like I'm missing a, a lot of things. We're only 25 minutes in. I feel like I haven't really said all that much. Let's go check out the general market and see how it's doing. And maybe there's going to be some sort of indications of something more obvious going on here. Uh, let's go to Mr. Buterall. Mr. Buterall just looks, uh, Mr. Buterall still looks bearish here. Just looks like a, uh, just looks like a retest of this area. Kind of make, uh, makes me a little bit more on the downside. I mean, you know, the four hour contest of 21 and it's still in a little, it's it's literally still in a downtrend. We are gonna be having hit and bearish divergence for sure uh, as our RSI is literally higher than any, at any point even before this area right here. So it'd have to rally above like 142 to kind of revert that. And it's still obviously in the context of a downturn right now. Um, let's see how the 12 hour looks as well. 12 hour is just testing the 10 simple, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, death cross is coming over here as well. However, same sort of issue with this one. I do think that that's, you know, it's, it's, it's unlikely to be what you want if you are looking to play the death cross. Um, and uh and probably gonna align with maybe another retest of like 130 133 in the interim but if we do see a rejection there that'd be a good indication that we're going to come back down uh, to the 110 ish region so it's going to be a lot it's this is kind of like the unfun part of um of this whole move because we're once again kind of consolidating on the lows and i'd imagine that's going to take a little bit of time here um i'm sure that uh well well, no, I, I won't put words in people's mouth because I actually don't know what generally people are thinking right now. Uh, what's Litecoin doing? Litecoin, kind of the same thing, a little bit, a little bit different. It did put it in a higher low, so we're seeing bifurcation in this market right now. It's 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 making things a lot more difficult for myself. Um, we do see, however, an inverted head and shoulders on the 12-hour RSI. That's probably the best thing that I can see for this one, and I do think that uh, 38 bucks short term would be a nice little targeted region for that. And uh, and if it does want to go for the full on move probably 42 and a half bucks but that would be Bitcoin around six thousand dollars as well um, so I don't really want to get too ahead of myself right there um, um, um let's see what the lower term time frames look like four hour four hours technically still in a downtrend as well well, we do have a higher low in place, but we still, we're still working on lower highs right now as well. You know, I'd say I'd say for Mrs. Litecoin, as long as we are operating below this area on a four hour closing basis, uh, still 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 no change in behavior from a medium time frame perspective. And this is going to be the thirty eight dollar region right here. Um, if it can't get above there, then, yes, I'd extend targets all the way up to like forty four bucks. Uh, and now look, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where the twelve hour twenty one is. Yeah, it is. Or, or around that region It's close. Enough. Jesus fucking Christ. What the fuck was that, man? <laughs> Sorry about that. Got a little bit scared. <laughs> Got a little bit scared on that one. Jesus, man. Anyways, um, oh, looks like Bitcoin's rallying up a little bit. I think that might be my play. Or oh, no, that uh, that uh, that uh, that was my cover. It looks like. All right, so I think it's actually getting time for me to play another position, perhaps. Let's see. You know, I do I do kind of like that area, but I didn't I didn't want to do that though. I, I didn't want to. It's not the area that I really wanted to cover in. Hmm. Let's see. I'll do some of that action. Okay, cool. All right, lovely. <clears throat> Anyways, all right. Um, now that we move through there, let's go check out some of the, uh, some of the other ones. And what about uh, Stellar? What's Stellar Rumens doing right now? Rallying up with the rest of the market. What is what do we look on a, look like on a daily? Still under pressure overall. What about Ripple Me Nipples? Mm, same sort of thing. I mean, everything's kind of coming from the same sort of area right now. So I'm not really seeing anything like too, I'm not seeing anything that's obviously different from the other ones. A little bit more of a tint to the downside on these guys. Um, but then again, we do have bullish divergence present on some of these, on some of these dailies for these, uh, for these altcoins as well. Uh, Neo being one of them. Um, let's see, do we have any, do, does Ripple have it? No, it does not have it. Uh, what about Tron? Okay, maybe maybe Neo's the odd man out. Yeah, this this uh, this is becoming quite difficult here. 
Um, a lot of these guys do look like they want to rally up though. So what does that mean for me? What does that mean for me? It means for me, I'm probably just going to, I'm probably just going to play this one safe here. Um, I will go along if we do start to close above like 5550 though, I, I will do that and start. I need to readjust this one for this chart. And it's very weird time right now as well as BitMEX and, um, and all other major exchanges are kind of like showing different prices uh, with regards to all of the tools that I use. So I've been defaulting to using actually Stamp and GDAX recently as they seem to be the more um, consistent ones and, and Finex to a lesser extent as well. But because of the, what happened on Friday the 13th last week, I think that Finex, or sorry, uh, Mex's charts are just, they're, 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 they are the outlier right now. They are the outlier because that exchange literally went down for how long? Um, let me make sure that, okay. Ooh, ooh, hold up, hold up. I really like this right now. I really, really like that. Ooh, I like that. I really like that. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, and how much do I have? Five, five, five. All right, nice. Okay, nice. Okay, great. All right, we're, we're good to go. Okay, um, what about Monero? I do want to check out this one as well. Just, just curious if it's kind of following the general, uh, the general trend for all these guys. I mean, they're still technically on a downtrend, but uh, the biggest, the the biggest, most bullish thing to me is that we are, we we actually do have a pretty damn good jewel buy signal. So that would be the biggest competing error to myself. Uh, let's go check out gold. Gold did hit. Gold, gold didn't just hit my fifteen or sorry, my fourteen thirty target. It actually exceeded it quite a bit. No, wait, no, 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 it did not. Hold on, where am I getting that from? Where am I getting that from? Uh, jewel sell signal on uh, on weekly gold, catching the top right here. Bearish divergence on the weekly RSI. Stork volatility percentile red as the devil's dick. Weekly uh, Stokes coming down as well. I like how all these guys are agreeing with each other. Um, where was my target? I think it was fourteen thirty ish region. So we haven't hit it just yet, but pretty fucking close. You know, I, I'd, I'd say that this is close enough, and we're probably gonna see a bounce off this region before anything else uh, goes on right now. Yesterday did have a nice bull wick back above the 200 x benchmark average right here, so I do like that. Other than that, I don't really have too strong of an opinion. I feel like we've seen the majority of the short-term move, and now it's time to just kind of be patient with the next obvious one. Okay, yeah, I was I was I was looking a little bit further south. Yeah, about 14, about 1430-ish region. So we didn't quite hit that area. About 20 bucks higher than that, but I, I do think that's essentially the test that I was looking for. So I don't, I, you know, I, I think it's going to play out a bounce here first before anything else. Um, although looking at a four hour, still kind of trending down, so maybe not. And Death Cross uh, uh, confirmed as well. I think probably a retest of the lows. Maybe we actually do hit the fourteen thirty-ish target. Yeah, you're gonna see me. You're, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna hear me, hear me have a lot of um, a lot of uh, a, a lot of what's and what ifs and a healthy amount of I don't know today because I don't feel all that strongly about the market. The last few days have felt quite strongly about the market. Um, and I want to speak very, very straightforward when I, when I feel strongly about the market, but right now I do not. And I want to be very open and honest when, when I do not feel strongly about the market. And, uh, for me, that's probably going to mean that I'm actually just going to de-risk a lot of my positions because I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't really see anything too obvious. The, the, the obvious things that I do see are a little bit further away. So fair enough. I hope that this analysis is in some way helpful, but uh, I can totally understand if, 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 if it is not, uh, mostly because I'm. I'm not that confident myself right now. Uh, Dixie still holding it up very, very nicely. And I do think that this one just got its nice, uh, its nice retest and probably does rally off this region, probably back up towards a 99 and a quarter high. Uh, on a weekly basis, so it's a little bit more long term oriented. But I, I do think um, I do think relevant nonetheless. Um, what else we want to look at? Um, May, uh, maybe an alt versus Bitcoin. I mean, I mean, is there anything obvious here? Uh, this is Cardano. Cardano looks like absolute shit still. Yeah, I, I, I think it's getting ready to come back down to like the 450-ish region. But again, I, you know, the easy moves that we got, we, you know, we already got. I, I, I do think it's going to come back down to like 460, 450-ish region, though. It's kind of nasty here um, before anything else happens. Let's go check out the, um, let's go check out Bitcoin uh, dominance. I've been doing this in a while, but uh, I am curious how it's doing right now. We've seen dominance more or less steady. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is anything but steady on this chart right here. But uh, as far as like a closing basis, if you just get rid of, the, rid of those wicks, which for some reason the weekly does, it does look like we're probably going to, we, we are probably putting in lows overall. We did retest this area right here. Good, you know, good bounce off that. It probably does come back down to this region, like 63 and a half, but that's probably going to be a buy for the Bitcoin dominance, which is essentially a sell for alts versus Bitcoins. Um, of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but it does, it does look like this is probably going to work its way back above the, uh, the next critical area would be about six, six and a half to the upside. If we can get that, if we can regain that area, I look for this to just ultimately wrap rally back up somewhere around here towards this trend line, which is in line with the 200 X benchmark average and kind of governing the last few highs. Um, and overall still kind of holding the, the long-term uptrend, of course, 
So I would still be, uh, I suppose, overall bearish on alts, but I, I do think that this is gonna have a short term down though. So in the very short term, alts probably do, uh, what's it called, uh, rally up a little bit. And then I look for that rally to probably be faded. Um, but uh, again, I feel like we're not we're not gonna get too much until the end of the week, unfortunately. It does make this a little bit more frustrating. Uh, but again, I share the frustration, man. Uh, anyways, let's go check out uh, dollar yen. How's dollar yen doing right now? dollar yen putting in a nice low last week. I do think that this one probably does rally back up here, back towards uh, 108, 108 and a half, 109 region. Uh, pound yen, what are we looking at here? Just straight fucking destruction to the downside. Um, probably gonna retest the lows officially somewhere right around like 128 region. And I'd be looking for a bounce there, but th this is just destruction, death cross and bringing us all the way down. I, I do think that we're gonna retest the lows essentially. Um, Euro dollar, what do we see here? Euro dollar coming down as well. The dollar is strong right now. And I do think that uh, this one probably does come down a little bit further overall i think it's actually gonna it's probably gonna land somewhere right around right below 110 ish region uh looking at the weekly i am not a fan of that that looks like a that looks like just yet again another lower high on the macro um um, um what about link we haven't checked on a link in a while link having a nice bounce i do think i think i do think that blink actually does probably uh maybe not <laughs> i do think it's gonna bounce up here a little bit but um not I, I wouldn't be so confident on linky i'm not confident on on, on anything on on any of these things right now the only obvious thing that i see again is just the open interest volume and price action very 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 simple tools alongside the blue boxes of peace and prosperity plus our probability cones right in over here I, I that's pretty much all that i'm going to be running off of right now um hmm would this be a good time to actually shut down this video maybe yes let's go back i do want to check out um uh, this once again, just to make sure that uh, open interest doesn't come down further after this last hundred dollar rally. It hasn't really; it's been more or less steady. Um, if if you do see open interest start to go up again and then price action go down, that would be a damn good indication that this that the short is going to work out for me. We probably do come back down to like forty eight fifty ish region. Uh, but for right now, I I don't feel strongly about this like at all, at all. I I, I am short right now. I just shorted that area right there at forty at fifty four fifty ish region. When you heard the little dingy ding. Um, or I reshorted it, I suppose. But uh, I don't, I, I, I don't see anything. I don't see really anything else that's too obvious. Um, so yeah, uh, this is this is me just being, <laughs> just being transparent as possible, man. Because I don't, I, I don't feel strong in this region, and when I don't feel strongly, I, I don't want to say. I don't want to say dumb shit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what I do feel strongly about though right now is the weekly. Um, if we do close the weekly above the 200 simple and 200 exponential mean average, that would look pretty damn good to me. Um, for at the very least a retest into the lower 6,000s. And I do think that Bitcoin would likely create a range. Let me put these back on. Would likely create a range between um, uh, what's it called? Uh, like uh, 4,500 and 6,500 for, you know, a month or two to come. Um, and then I looked and, and, the, and, and then I'd actually look at that range to probably act as reaccumulation. We should see, be seeing signals of that. And, uh, and but again, it's going to take time to really to really look at. Now, if we do close this weekly below the 200 simple, I think that would be the most obvious one for, you know, maybe we do get another retest up to 6000, but it's probably going to be a sell, at least for myself. And uh, and we'll come down all the way below 4000, very, very likely over time. But for right now, in the lower term time frames, I mean, really, all that it comes down to is just a blue box of peace and prosperity. And right now, they're not even really all that prosperous. Um, you know, we ba we basically tested this one right here, essentially. <clears throat> well, not really, even not really. Just testing the twenty one on the four hour. Um, and uh, but you know, as you know, as long as we're below this area right here, my medium and higher time frame analysis is still bearishly biased, and I do think that we probably come back down somewhere right around like 4850, 40, uh, 4650, some, uh, something like that in this blue box territory right here. Um, now, if we do break above this region, close like a two hour dildo above uh, fifty five fifty, uh, preferably a four hour higher time frame, as always better. Then I would look for extension to that six thousand to sixty one hundred target right here. But until that happens, I'm 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 very skeptical of this. This this is this this is starting to look a little bit more like a lower high, and the open interest really does make me a little bit more. If I had to be biased right now to the downside, because again, I mean, at the end of the day, Bitcoin is trending down on, on all time frames. You know, above like a above like a four hour essentially. Um, and uh, now the four hour could change here, but again, I need I need to see proof of change first. Uh, if Bitcoin does break below essentially like 4650, 47, uh, yeah, for, uh, 4650 to 4700, I, I you know I, I'd be looking for an overall move back down to like 4250 ish down here, and uh, you'll probably see a trend line like this form, and we'll probably put in our next our third drive of divergence somewhere down around here, and that would be the obvious trade that I'm really looking for to put on some actual risk for potentially a long term position. Those are the ones that I really want to be waiting for and keeping and, and keep my account you know open and safu for um, but for right now 
I don't really, I, I, I don't feel that strongly about price action. I did put on a short right here. I cut, I covered and took a long when you heard one of the uh, thingies and then, and then, and then I just, or sorry, I covered my short earlier when you heard one of those uh, dingy dings. And then I put, and then I put back on another short a little bit higher. Um, and now, now I'll keep on playing the position using this as kind of a backstop right here. But, uh, overall. That's all I'm gonna be doing today, ma'am. Um, probably gonna end up taking this position off. You know, even if it comes back down to like 5100-ish region, I, I, I think I'll just end up taking profit on this. But for right now, I wanna be wishing you well once again. I will be on, uh, or I'll very likely be on uh, Twitch later tonight, assuming that nothing drastically terrible happens in the interim. And uh, Jesus Christ, man, this video is already 40 minutes and I feel like I, I feel like I didn't even get all that many ideas out. You know, I do apologize if you, if you did not find this video all that helpful. Um, I actually truly apologize about it, but I, I don't feel confident right now on this price action. The last few days, I felt very confident. Confident. Not so much today. Anyways, with that said, I want you to be signing off. Take care and until next time.